Hello, in this video we are going to be exploring one of the color options in Affinity and that would be the color panel. So to find the color panel, we'll go to Window and then select Color and that will pop it up. So you can make this particular one wider if you want. It doesn't extend this direction. We'll see in the next video on swatches that you can expand the swatches in this direction. But for this one, if you want it a little bigger, you can just make it wider by hovering until you get the double arrows. All right, so let's take a look at some of the different options that you have here. In a prior video, I have talked about this kind of donut and circle system. So I'm not going to go too deeply into it other than the front one is going to be whatever you are affecting. So the fill of the shape, which is the interior part of this square, or the stroke of the shape, which is the outline around it. Whatever's in front is the thing that you're going to be affecting. So if I wanted to change the color of this outline, let's say I just wanted to make it a dark purple, then we could kind of go over here until we find the purple that we want, and now we have changed that stroke outline. Let's say I didn't want a stroke. Well, one of the ways you can get rid of that is to go to this set to none. So if I click that, you'll see that that turned this to white with a red line through it, which means like no. Um, and so it's no stroke on there. And now we just have the fill of it. I'm going to put the stroke back on for the purposes of this demo. So right next to it, we have a color picker tool. I also have another video where we talk about this color picker tool, which is going to be a little bit uh, more user-friendly and more comprehensive. The color picker in these panels works a little bit more like picking a color to a clipboard. So almost like a copy paste. So if we click and hold our mouse, we get this kind of magnifying glass and we can find the color we want. Let's say I want this black. And you'll see nothing happened, even though this is selected, but it did load that black up onto the color picker clipboard. And so now I can click that color and click the fill and it will turn that black. Okay, so that is the color picker tool. So think of that as selecting a color and loading it to a clipboard. These numbers don't really do anything on their own, but they show you the HSL numbers or values in case you wanted to note that um, in terms of taking this to another project, you wanted to know the exact colors. So let's uh, make this a different color again. So let's make that fill nice and red. So down here we have a slider for opacity. And so that's going to make my shape more transparent. And you can see I placed a different shape under it for demonstration purposes. So we could see that it's becoming more transparent or more opaque as we move the slider. You can accomplish the same thing here, but you're just going to have a drop down of percentages um, and you can choose a specific percent. I find the slider easier to work with um, because you can just kind of visually watch it change until you have the correct opacity that you want. Now, here's a little hidden thing. Um, when you click on this little dot here, it says switch. What does it switch to? Well, it switches to noise. So what is noise? Noise kind of adds like a grain to it. So it looks, I mean, I kind of think look, it looks like a Formica countertop, but I think it's meant to look a little bit sparkly. Um, it just adds some texture to your colors. So you can switch that from zero to 100% as well. And then you can just toggle it by clicking once on this little dot to go back to opacity. Over here, we have the hex code of the color. So hex codes are, um, associated with RGB colors. It's a six digit code that represents a specific color. And so you can, if you know the code of the color that you want, you can just click on that and type it directly in. So in my color video where I talked about the different color systems like RGB and CMYK, um, I showed that FF0000 means full red, zero green and zero blue in the RGB system. So if we type that in, we're going to get full bright red. Over here, we just have some swatches, recently used colors that are saved over here. Sometimes I see these, sometimes I don't. Um, and I honestly haven't figured out exactly how to make them appear other than sometimes they're there. 
Um, so let's talk about the color wheel now. So the color wheel is um, related to this HSL in that we have hue, saturation, and lightness. So hue, you can think of that as the fundamental color. So if we call a color red or blue or yellow or green, that's going to be what the hue is. So you can slide around this wheel on the outside and find your fundamental color. The S stands for saturation, and that's the intensity of the color. So you can see this dot is all the way at the peak of this triangle. This is a very intense kind of hot pink. If I pull this down this way, it's going to kind of mute it. And so it's taking the intensity until it's almost completely gray. So you can mute the color by taking the intensity or the saturation of it down. The other thing you can effect is the lightness. Sometimes saturation and lightness can be a little confusing. So I think if you think of it as intensity or brightness, uh, in term, or sorry, uh, let's not use the word bright brightness, that would be confusing, but intensity I think is a good word and then muting that um, to take down the intensity or the saturation. Um, lightness refers to uh, white and black. So you can see if I have zero color here, I can take this all the way to white, all the way to black. If I move up in this triangle, I've got that fundamental kind of purple color, but I am taking the lightness and the darkness and affecting that. So intensity or saturation in this direction, lightness and darkness in this direction. All right, now we've got this little hamburger menu. So let's take a look at some different options. So if we click on this, we've got wheel with a check mark, and that's what we've been looking at right now. So we can also go to sliders. And if we go to sliders, you'll see one of the things we have is a drop down menu. So we are currently working with RGB mode. We can also have RGB hex, which is the same thing, except it's got that little box for the RGB hex code in it. Let's just go back to the RGB. This stands for red, green, and blue. And so we can kind of go through here, pick a color, and then we can adjust the amount of redness in it, the amount of green in it, and the amount of blue in it. So you can also type in the separate values for all of these here if you know that from another project or maybe you've been looking at palettes online and you have a specific color you want to replicate. So the other thing you have here is CMYK that is similar except for the C stands for cyan. So how much blue is in the color, how much magenta is in the color, how much yellow is in the color, and how much black is in the color. So same thing, you kind of want to find your starting spot here and then you can tweak the amount of the C, M, Y, and K that you have in the color. Again, you can type in the exact values if you know them into these boxes. So let's back up to this one, HSL. So this is similar to what we were doing with the color wheel. We've got our fundamental hue. So let's start with, let's say, a blue this time and then saturation, fully intense and saturated, or completely unsaturated, or somewhere in between. And then the L will be our slider for the lightness of that color. Lab colors is a specific uh, color thing that I don't use and I don't know a lot about, um, and it's, I think, more used in professional applications uh, since most of the people watching this, I. Uh, I'm believing are kind of DIY designers. You are making printables or KDP books or digital products, and uh, you're not a pro graphic designer if you're watching this, because if you are, you probably know all this already. So uh, I all I know is that lab is a specific color scheme that might be used more with professional printers. Um, it gives you a wider um, palette. Uh, it's all the visible light, I believe, all the different... Um, options that you could possibly see. We also have grayscale, and so we can pretty much pick, you know, never mind 50 shades of gray, we can get any shade of gray with this one. So you can use this box here, and you can then tweak the lightness and the darkness of it up here. All of these, again, have the opacity and the ability to switch to noise. So if you want something that looks a little bit like silver, you can get that by turning the noise way up. 
All right, so let's go back and, and put this back on a color. So let's just find a color here. All right, and so now we have boxes and this is similar and really what you use is going to be just personal preference, whatever makes sense to your brain. But you can find again, a color here. Right now the drop, drop down says lightness. So this slider is going to affect the lightness of whatever color you selected here. Saturation. So let's just say we picked a color here. Now we're going to use the saturation level to completely saturate or unsaturate that. And then hue, this slider becomes a hue chooser. Moving on, we have tint. Now tint, uh, what that does is it takes your color and it adds white to it. So if we take this tint down, we're adding more and more white until it's completely white. Now, one thing I want you to notice is I put another shape behind here on purpose because as we're moving the tint and it's getting lighter, we are not seeing that black heart shape behind this box. But a lot of times it can be tempting when you're designing, especially when you're new, to just take the opacity down in order to lighten up a color. But if you have something behind it, that's going to make it transparent. So if you want to lighten up a color without changing the opacity, use the tint. All right. And so if we wanted to copy a specific color to the clipboard as a hex, we can do that here. And then let's just say we want to go back to this and hex, and then I can highlight that and paste it. Now it's obviously the same color because it's the one that was already selected, but that allows you to just pick a color and paste it into your hex code. Okay. So, um, let's take a look at add color to swatch and add cord to swatch. So in a separate video, I'm going to talk about the swatches panel. So there's going to be a little bit of overlap here, and I will probably cover this in both videos uh, because of that. But let's say I like this color and I want to save it. I can add that to a swatch. Now it doesn't look like anything happened, but let's go to window and swatches. And you'll see over here, here is my color that I just saved. So I'm in the colors and you can also see it in my recently used colors, but this is the one that I actually saved um, as a swatch. So we saw another one, add cord to swatch, and there was a lot of different options here. When I talk about the swatches panel, I'm going to go through these because I also have a separate video that talks about color codes, uh, cords, sorry, color cords. So we'll look at this a little bit more in the swatches video, but I do want to talk about tints, shades, and tones here. So we looked at that tint slider. We also have shades and tones. So, um, shades, is going to add black. Now I clicked that and it again, doesn't look like anything happened, but let's go over to the swatches. And so this is where we left off last time we looked at swatches, but what it has done, it has added kind of a palette of colors based on that color. And each one has a little bit more black added to it. So let's just select this so we can see the different colors here. So it's adding more and more black to that starting color and created a whole swatch for me. So likewise, let's go back here. Let's just for sake of example, pick a different color and we'll go back to that hamburger menu, add cord to swatch and go down to tones. Now tones is going to add grays to this purple color that we have right now. And actually just for sake of demo, let's just choose a lighter color so we can see it a little better. Okay, so let's click tones. Again, doesn't look like anything happened, but if we go to swatches, here is all of the colors that it added to my swatches based on that fundamental color in increments of increasing amounts of gray added to it. So tints adds white, which will lighten your color. Shades adds black, which will darken your colors and tones will add gray to it. So this is where I'm going to um, stop in this video because pretty much everything else applies to the swatches. 
So I hope you found this helpful. And if you want to make sure not to miss the next video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. Thanks again.